Hi, welcome to this course. So before we get started, we need to have some fundamental understanding of Grasshopper. And I just opened up a Rhino canvas having the template tower, one of the towers that we are actually going to model up using Grasshopper. And I just wanted to show to you that this is kind of a preview of what we can accomplish. But even to be much more clear, I want to open up a totally new file in Rhino. If I go to file, I go to new and Rhino will ask me, okay, you want to open up a new file. What units do you want to have? Now, again, I work in the metric system, so I'm going to take the meters, right? But you can take any unit system that feels more comfortable for you. So again, I'm going to choose the meters for now. So I can also say, use this file when Rhino starts. That means every time Rhino will start, I will start with meters. So I do not have to do that in the beginning. Now, I do not need that, but just say open and Rhino will just open up a new file. Now, with Rhino, you should have some experience so far. If you do not have experience, I would highly recommend to um, look at my other course, Asuma House, where I show the fundamentals on Rhino Zeros, Rhino 6 that is, and I'll take you through all the different steps of just do 2D drafting, then 3D modeling, and then actually layouting and etc. So it's very useful, especially if you are a beginner. Now, going back to Grasshopper, in Rhino 6, they have included Grasshopper in this palette. So if you go to Standard in Rhino, you have these different tabs, right? And in Standard, you will have your Grasshopper icon. You can just basically press with one button, your left mouse button, and this will trigger Grasshopper, and it will then open automatically. So you can see the Grasshopper window already opened up. Now it's loading all of the plugins that you have installed. Now, if it's the first time you should open, this should be very, very fast, but I have a lot of different plugins installed. So this might take a few seconds till it goes through all the plugins and loads them actually. Okay, so once it is done, this is it. And I'm going to make the full window appear right now. So we are just, Rhino is always there for you, right? This is the interface that you actually see the geometry, but let me dive into that in a second. Now, in the beginning, what you should have are these main tabs here on the top. So this is a Grasper canvas, as you can see, and you should have something that is kind of limited on your current panels. So you should have the basic panels, which are your params, your math sets, vectors, curves, surfaces, meshes, intersections or intersect, transform and display. And new in Rhino or in Rhino 6, you should also have Kangaroo 2. And I think Beaverbird is also included. Everything else that you see here are all plugins that I downloaded myself. And I will show you in a second how you could do that. Okay, so just getting to understand, these are your main tabs that you can actually go into. And this is the same logic as Rhino uses with its clusters. So up here you have your uh, panels also. And let's say you want to draw a surface, you would go to the respective tab, which is the surface tools. And here you find all the geometry and all the edit and modification tool or commands that are kind of dealing with surfaces. The same applies here in Grasshopper. So you can go here to surfaces and you can see that there are also again, then grouped into specific themes in surface. So you can analyze the surface, you can create a freeform surface, you can create a primitive surface, so basic shapes. You have your util and you have additionally always some features that might come from different plugins. So for the instance, you should not have this watermelon, for instance, right? And this one you should not have also. This is something that we did and I will show you later on how we can do this also in the last, I think, last set of the course. So this, again, I can now so I can again expand it a bit. Then you have your basic tabs up on the upper part, which are just like main top level commands that you can just change, right? But I'm not going to dive in too much into that right now. What I want to show to you is what actually is a component in Grasshopper, right? So Grasshopper is visual scripting. That means that you actually are doing kind of scripting. So you're coding actually, but you're using visual components to do so. And that means, for instance, if I would go to a curve and I would want to do a, let's say a circle, a very simple thing actually, right? I would go to curve and go to primitive because circle is a primitive or a very basic curve form. I would go to 
and just kind of search for a circle. You can see a circle I can find there and I can just drag and drop it into my canvas. Now, this is a component that you have placed into Grasshopper, right? The same way as actually going up here and um, taking a component similar to Rhino where you have this command line, the same can be done in Grasshopper just by double clicking on the canvas wherever you are. If you just double click, you can see that this enter a search keyword will appear. And here you can literally just enter something like sir, sir, just the three first letters. And you can see all the different options or components that might be interesting for you in this context. For me, the first option actually is exactly that component that I had here. So again, this enter the search keyword is the main way you want to actually bring in components because I mean, it's just more time consuming to just go up here and then find the respective component. But especially in the beginning, you don't really have a choice because you do not know the naming of those components. For instance, if I would want to do a point, right? Uh, I can just leave it here for a second because that's already the first component. If I would want to do a point, there is no real point panel here, right? There's no, I don't really know how to draw a point here in Grasshopper. So I need to know that if I go to vector the tab, actually there is a group called point. So if I drop down this one, and here you can always just drop down with this arrow it's indicating that. Now I have an array of different components which kind of deal with this group of points. And I see that I can construct a point, but there's no point that I can just use right here. So I can take this construct point, sounds good. And now again, I have this component which looks a bit intimidating because it wants like three features from me and I have no idea about Grasshopper right now. So what is a component again? And this is something we will talk about in the next set. Hi, I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please feel free to leave a comment, a like, and most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also note that this video is part of a 13 hour long online tutorial series called Algorithmic Skyscraper Design. You can find it on my e-learning platform, Design Upgrade. That is courses.design-upgrade.com. To get access to all online courses, just sign up and secure yourself an all access membership. Choose one of the many courses available with one new added course each month. In the algorithmic skyscraper design, I will take you from zero to hero for practice-based visual scripting inside Rhino. Learn also to create advanced environmental simulations and design user interfaces with Grasshopper. So see you there and let us make some design upgrades.